friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen. I'm a weight loss and nutrition coach who has lost 140 pounds and since maintained that weight loss for almost two years. And it is Friday, so we know what that means. It is weigh-in day. We're going to talk about my week. I just came back from a little mini vacation. And we're gonna talk about the Weight Watchers workshop topic. Last week I let you know that I wasn't able to find the workshop topic on the Weight Watchers website, which is where I have always pulled the topic from. And a lot of you commented, thank you so much. And let me know that the topic at your workshop did change. It just wasn't updated on the website. Well, I have some additional information on that. Frustrating information, but information nonetheless that I'm going to be sharing with you. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, turn your bell on, because we do these videos every Friday and I actually upload five videos every single week. Down in the description box, I will have nutrition coaching. Highly, highly, highly recommend those personalized macros and calories. That is what I follow to lose and maintain my weight loss, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching for questions, accountability, or to talk with me directly. Links, discounts to my favorite things, and come join our Facebook group. It's free, it's supportive. We would love to have you are all down in that description box. So let's talk about my week, my vacation, and Weight Watchers. So first let's talk about my little trip. Last week I let you guys know that when you saw my weigh-in video, I was actually in California for a nutrition conference. My friend Henry was there, my good friend Amy was there. Amy is the one that I had cosmetic surgery with back in May of last year. We've done a couple videos together here on my channel. You guys love Amy as much as I do. She actually flew in from upstate New York for the conference. I will go ahead and pop up a few pictures here for you. I had an amazing, amazing time. I flew in Wednesday late afternoon, flew home Sunday morning. Sunday was a long day of flying, a very long day of flying. I actually left California just to go to Denver. Don't ask. Don't ask why I go to Colorado to go to Arizona. But I sat in Denver's airport for three hours. I ended up leaving at eight in the morning and I didn't get home till almost 5 p.m. So it was just a very, very, very long day to just go a state or two, just for that short distance between California and Arizona. But it was worth it because the conference was so much fun. It was very educational, very enlightening. It was just a great time with my friends. We had a costume contest one night. I dressed up as a hippie. I was actually a hippie last year for Halloween and I posted some pictures on my Instagram and a lot of you asked where I got my costume. I actually got it from Amazon. So I'll link it for you if you're interested. Super affordable, super cute. Troy and I actually dressed up as hippies last year for Halloween. And then we had a formal night where we got to dress up. There was a fashion show. The red dress that I wore from my devil costume the year before. I just wore the dress to the formal night. And that I purchased off of Shein. I don't know if I'll be able to find it. Whatever I can find, I will link them down below for you costume wise. But it was just really, really fun. Every time I'm with Amy, it's so much fun. Every time I'm with Henry, it's so much fun. I met some new friends, saw some old friends. It was just really good. It was really, really soul fulfilling. I will say that I miss Lola a lot though. I just, I hate leaving her at this stage. She's older. You know that she's just finishing up her chemo. I'll give you an update on that. And I just don't like leaving her. The first night that I was gone Thursday, Troy said she was pretty sad. She just kind of laid around, moped a little bit. That's typically what she does. It's interesting because she's fine during the day. It's at night when she seems to really miss me. And it just breaks my heart. In fact, I woke up to a text from Troy on Saturday morning. And of course, the minute I wake up, I'm crying. And the text said that he went into the bedroom where Lola was sleeping and he said, mommy will be home soon and you guys can snuggle and watch TV. And she just got this big smile on her face. And it just, it made me sad. It makes me emotional just thinking about it because she just has the sweetest smile. It's the pity smile, I like to say, where they just, they just smile. And she just was happy to hear the word mommy and that I was coming home. And it just, it broke my heart, but it also made me happy to know that, that she was happy in that moment, knowing that I was coming home to her. And like I said, this time with her is precious to me. And because she's older and because she's just been battling cancer now for a year and a half, I just... I don't like to leave her. I just, I really want to be with her as much as possible. So although the trip was amazing and fun, I definitely missed her. Palmer and Troy had a great time together. Palmer does not miss me. Troy says that he'll look at the garage door periodically or if he hears something, he thinks it's me, but he doesn't miss me. He's happy with his dad, but Lola does miss me and that makes it hard for me to leave her. So it was a good trip overall. It was really fun. I learned a lot. 
It was good to get away. It was nice to just enjoy a little time with my friends. I did pretty good with my food, to be honest with you. I did pack protein shakes. In fact, Amy and I walked about 45 minutes to an hour every single morning. We walked and got coffee, and then we just got to talk and enjoy each other's company. We live on separate coasts. We don't get to see each other as much as we would like. So that was probably one of my favorite things about the weekend was our morning walk, just getting in some movement and enjoying my time with Amy. They fed us one lunch. We actually had chicken fajitas and salad. It was amazing. And then I split my meals with Amy the rest of the weekend. So I feel like overall I did pretty good. I will say that when I came home on Sunday, Troy and I ordered pizza because listen, I'm not cooking dinner when I've been gone all weekend. So I had pizza Sunday night and then I was back to normal on Monday. No more pizza for me. I let Troy finish up the leftover pizza and I went back to eating the food that works better for me. Pizza definitely causes a temporary weight spike on the scale for me because of the sodium. And honestly, I ate out the entire weekend. I was ready for just home cooked meals. So Monday, which is what you saw on Wednesdays, what I eat in a day, I was right back to my normal food. If you miss Wednesdays, what I eat in a day, you need to see it. Lots of pumpkin recipes in there, an amazing dinner recipe. I'll link that video for you. When I came home Sunday, of course, there was lots of mail and packages. And one thing that finally came, I ordered this and I'm so excited for this. I've been using this nonstop since I got home from my trip. And that's my new scale from Hume Health. This scale, you guys, if you want an accurate scale in every fashion, even your body composition, body fat, water, you need the Hume scale. Hume scale. This is a body composition scale. And like I said, it is the most accurate, comprehensive scale on the market. It even has an app that you can track your weight, track your measurements. When you step on the scale, it's actually going to put that information directly into your app for you. It prompts you to track, it prompts you to weigh in. It's been such a game changer for me. I'm absolutely loving this. It gives you so much great information, your body mass index, your body weight, your body fat percentage, and your muscle mass percentage. This is the most accurate scale for that information. It has so many incredible features. It's going to give you your metabolic age, your body fat percentage, your body water percentage, body weight, body mass index, bone mass, visceral fat, body fat mass, basal metabolic rate, muscle weight, muscle mass percentage, protein rate, weight without fat, protein mass, subcutaneous fat, standard weight, and weight control. It helps you reach your health goals with access to 56 vital body metrics. It's compatible with Hume Watches, the Apple Health app, Google Fit, and other fitness apps. Now I have the Apple watch. So the Hume scale is completely compatible with my Apple watch. It really just helps you understand your health better. I cannot recommend it enough. I will link it down below for you. I do have a discount for it as well. If you want the most accurate scale, not only just for your weight, but also showing you why you may be having a weight fluctuation, which is so hard for people to understand that there's a difference between gaining fat and a weight fluctuation, the Hume scale is going to give you the data that you need to understand those weight fluctuations. I love that it offers bone density, body fat, even the visceral fat, the fat that's detrimental to your body, your bone density, it's absolutely incredible. I was so excited to find this best decision I ever made was to purchase the Hume scale. And again, I will link it down below for you with a discount code. We'll talk about my weight too, because I did weigh myself on my old scale and my new Hume scale. And that was an interesting weigh-in. So we'll talk about that. But before I do, let's chat about Weight Watchers and the weekly topic. So I mentioned in last week's weigh-in, I typically go onto the Weight Watchers website on my computer, not in through the app, but on my computer. And the weekly topic is always updated under the Weight Watchers program tab. Well, last week it was the same topic as it was the week before. And like I said, a lot of you commented and let me know that when you went to your in-person workshop, that the workshop topic was different. It was actually how to lower your grocery bill. So I didn't understand why it wasn't updating on the Weight Watchers website. Well, my friend D Denise with Dish With D here on YouTube, I don't know if you follow her or not, but I will link her channel for you. She actually sent me a personal message and let me know, this is so frustrating. <laughs> She let me know that Weight Watchers has decided to no longer have the weekly topic in the app or on the website. So the only way that you can access the weekly topic is to go to in-person meetings. Now, let me tell you why this is extremely frustrating and annoying beyond annoying. Not everybody has access to in-person workshops. There is one workshop 
there's one Weight Watchers workshop near me. It's in Tucson and it is 45 minutes away. They have two meetings a week. Neither one of those meetings work with my schedule, nor do I really feel like driving 45 minutes for a Weight Watchers workshop topic. And there are other areas in the country where they don't even offer in-person workshops. So you're paying for the Weight Watchers app, you're paying for the Weight Watchers website, and they're taking away your access to the weekly topic. It doesn't make any sense to me. She said that it's because they're trying to get you to intent, attend in-person workshops, but, e but you're still paying for the app and you're still paying for the website. So you should have access to all of the information that you're paying for, workshop topic included. So now, like I said, the only way to get access Access to the Weight Watchers workshop topic is to attend an in-person workshop. She also said that she doesn't have always have access to in-person workshops. So for her, she attends a virtual workshop. So they do offer their in-person workshops online virtually. So she was able to get the Weight Watchers workshop topic through that virtual meeting. Now, I don't really want to attend a virtual meeting to be completely honest with you. However, it looks like that's the only way for me to get access to the topic. It's either drive to Tucson on one of the two days that the one workshop is offered, which is not realistic for me. It would cut into my workout time. It would cut into my filming and editing time, which is much more of a priority for me or to attend a virtual workshop, which like I said, isn't something I necessarily want to do. I'm not opposed to it, but it's not for me, a really valuable use of my time because I focus more on calories and macros than I do on tracking Weight Watcher points. I just let my points be whatever my points are every day. I just focus on eating enough protein and eating enough calories to keep my metabolism cruising along and to be able to maintain my weight more effectively. So I need your feedback. I need to know what you guys want to see in Friday's weigh-in video. I still want to bring you my weigh-in. I still want to talk to you about any updates kind of going on in my life. I want to know, would it be beneficial for you, for me to attend the virtual workshop once a week to get the Weight Watchers workshop topic information to then share with you in my Friday video? Or would you rather me just give you updates, talk about my weigh-in, kind of like a chatty update weigh-in video that does not include the Weight Watchers workshop topic? Let me know down in the comments. Weight Watchers workshop topic or no Weight Watchers workshop topic. I still want to do my Friday video because it's my weigh-in for with you. I also like to, like I said, talk to you about my week, give you any updates that I have. So I still want to do my Friday video. I just want to know if you want to see the Weight Watchers workshop topic or no topic. Let me know down below. I am willing to do whatever you want to see. So I am a little frustrated. Actually, I'm a lot of frustrated and I think that that is an invaluable use of a Weight Watchers membership to no longer have access to the workshop topic especially if you don't have access to an in-person workshop, or maybe you don't even have access to going to a virtual workshop. Some people aren't very computer savvy and don't even know how to access these workshops. I truly believe that it is a disservice from Weight Watchers to take it out of the app and take it off of the website. If you're doing the topic anyways, what harm is it in putting it in the app and putting it on the website? So it's very, very frustrating for me. It's just one more thing about Weight Watchers that I feel is a disservice, that I feel is a feature that they take away from us, even though we continue to pay pretty high prices to be a member of Weight Watchers. So that is something that I need to navigate moving into 2025 hours. What do I want to do with Weight Watchers? And that's something that I really want to think about. I will give you guys an update once I make some decisions on that. But like I said, this is just another thing they're taking away, just another disservice, even though they're still charging us the same amount for our membership. So let me know your thoughts. What are your thoughts on taking away the workshop topic off of the app and off of the web? website. And again, your only way to get access to this is an in-person or virtual workshop. And let me know what you want to see as far as my Friday videos go. One more quick little update before we talk about my weigh-in. Lola finished her second round, her full round of CHOP chemotherapy on Tuesday. She officially graduated from her second round of chemo. She's doing really well. She is still in full remission. I will tell you that Tuesday was rough. She did not want to go. She did exactly what she did last week, like full on breaks, does not want to go to the back. She's a hundred percent over it. So now I just pray with every fiber of my soul that she stays in remission forever <laughs> as long as possible because she's really just overgoing there. She does still have to go back for checkups and blood work. We need to monitor it because if for some reason she does fall out of remission, which please, please, please doesn't happen, we've got to catch it early so that we can figure out what treatment 
tests we have available for her. So we need to continue to go there for follow-up, but I just hope that she just, she gets a break and a really long break, maybe a forever break from having to have chemo. She's just over it. I mean, she's an older dog. She's almost 12. She's just, it's a lot on her. It's a lot on her body. She mentally hates it. She shakes the minute we get off of the freeway. She tries to hide behind me when we get there. I'm just, Fingers crossed, hoping for a long, long, forever remission for her. And please, please, please send your prayers and good vibes for Lola. I just want my baby to live out her life healthy and cancer-free. Please, if I would give my right arm, like I would give anything for that. So if you could just send your good thoughts and good vibes towards Lola, that would really mean a lot to me. But I'm happy and proud of my warrior, proud of my cancer fighter, proud of my chemo graduate. Okay. This has been an emotional way in video. What the heck? The last couple of videos have been pretty emotional for me. I guess there's just a lot going on right now. And yeah, it's been a lot. It's been a lot. So let's get on to my way and let's talk about something that doesn't make me emotional. Although weigh-ins can absolutely make us emotional, but I am coming off of my little mini vacation. Like I said, I feel like overall I did really well on my trip. I did splurge. I ate out for most of my meals. They, like I said, provided us one meal. I did bring my own snacks. They did give us healthy snacks at all the vendors and things at the conference. But for my lunches and dinners I ate out. For my breakfast, I made myself a yogurt bowl. We did stop at a grocery store and I got Catalina Crunch yogurt and fruit. So I did make a healthy breakfast. Like I said, I ate out the rest of the meals. We had pizza Sunday when I got home. So I wasn't sure what to expect stepping on the scale. Speaking of scale, let me just tell you, when I stepped on my old scale and my Hume scale, the information was very, very different. The Hume scale, much more accurate. Weight, body composition, everything about my Hume scale is so much more accurate than my old scale. My old scale was a body composition scale as well, but I will tell you, I could step on and off that thing multiple times and get multiple different information. My Hume scale, when I step on, 900 times, the 900 times have the same information. It is so incredibly accurate. And I am now basing my weight solely off of my Hume scale. I actually put my old scale into my spare bedroom with my Goodwill pile, the stuff that I donate to Goodwill. I donate my clothes to a local women's shelter and all the other things to Goodwill. Since we're moving, we're kind of cleaning things out slowly. So that scale, she's getting donated to Goodwill because my Hume scale has changed my life. And when I stepped on the scale today, guess what? I maintained my weight. So between last Friday and this Friday, my weight is to the ounce the same. Now I will tell you that there was some fluctuation once returning from my trip, especially a couple days post Sunday. So Monday and Tuesday, again, I had pizza for dinner on Sunday. Travel bloat is absolutely a real thing. But by Tuesday, my weight pretty much leveled out. I was using my Hume scale. And today when I stepped on the scale, I weigh exactly the same as I did prior to my trip. And you know what? That's a huge win. That's an absolutely huge, 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 huge win. I love seeing all of the body composition information on the Hume scale. It just reiterates to me that I do have a lot of lean muscle and lower body fat, which makes me really happy. Regardless of the number on the scale, it's more those other pieces of our body composition that we really need to focus on. And I'm feeling really good with the maintenance. Really, really good. I'm actually really proud of myself to be completely honest. So I feel good moving into this next week. I feel good moving into the month of October. The last three months of the year are always the hardest three months. I always say people tend to gain 10 to 12 pounds between October 1st and January 1st. I also am offering my holiday challenge. If you're interested in joining our holiday challenge, it is a paid Facebook group. We have challenges monthly. We do weekly giveaways. It's a great way to not gain those 10 to 12 pounds over the holidays. I'll put the link in the description box for the holiday challenge. And please let let me know what you want to see moving forward in this video. Do you want the Weight Watchers Workshop topic? Do you not want the Weight Watchers Workshop topic? What would you like to see me include in Friday videos? Let me know down below and thank you in advance for your feedback. Thank you for your support, your good vibes, your love for Lola. Just thank you for being you and thank you for being the best community I could ever ask for. I'm seriously beyond blessed for each and every one of you. So thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart and I will see you in tomorrow's grocery haul. Bye, friends.